Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Don. Greetings and God bless. What a great day it is to be alive. And it's e even greater to be alive with Christ in you. <laughs> I am discovering this in the book of Romans. You know, it's interesting. Every time I take on a project in the Bible, I you learn something new. I hate, I keep learning something new, and it it continues to bless me every day. And each time, the more I work these scriptures, the more real it becomes. And when when you take those things that you learn, and you actually put them into practice, or it, it becomes real, it becomes more real, it becomes a reality and this this new birth that Jesus Christ made available each day it seems it becomes more and more real again <laughs> this is this is absolutely fabulous Christianity is not a religion Christianity True Christianity is a father and his family. We are born into the family of God. God is our father. We are his children. Jesus Christ is our big brother. This is a family business. And I'm not kidding. This is a family business. And you and I, Christians, we actually run well we don't run the business we operate the business <laughs> well I guess Jesus Christ is Lord he's like the uh, supervisor I guess God's the one that you know calls the shots okay I don't know the <laughs> hierarchy all I know is, is Jesus Christ is Lord and we are responsible for the the information in the church epistles dealing with the family business and this is absolutely fabulous the way God had set this up and all of this was actually hidden in God and it was not revealed until it was revealed to the Apostle Paul that's the the great not all of it there were some, I'll just share that with you this I'm talking about the family business things like that that was that was hidden that was not made known beforehand there are things that were that were prophesied. Man, I'll, I'll take you that. Let's go to Romans chapter one. This book of Romans is fabulous. The more I work it, the more I study it, the more interesting it becomes. <laughs> because, and you got to have a, a little bit of background. Uh, I say a little bit. You, first eleven chapters of the book of Genesis. You got to you got to know a little bit about Abraham, somewhat. You got to know a little bit about the law. Uh, you got to know a little bit about David. You got to know uh, some of Jesus Christ. You got to you got to understand, you know, at least an overview of the book of Acts. Something occurred on the day of Pentecost and it could not have occurred unless Jesus Christ died and rose again. And that thing that which came on the day of Pentecost, gift of Holy Spirit, in the uh, Old Testament day, Old Testament days, before the days before the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit was limited. It was it was only upon certain men, and it was by measure, and you could lose it. But af on the day of Pentecost and after the day of Pentecost, it is a gift. This Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh. That's prophesied by Joel and confirmed by Peter in, uh, in his sermon on the day of Pentecost. It was poured out upon all flesh, and it was a gift. It was a and gift. Of course, the details were, were revealed later, but it was a gift. And to receive the gift, what what is it? Uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of Holy Spirit. It was a gift. 
The Holy Spirit was not a gift in the Old Testament. It was not a gift. In our day and time, it's a gift. And the details of this we find out later. It's, it's the new birth. It is a new birth. You get born into the family of God. Things like that is absolutely fabulous. Why is this not being taught in the Christian church today? It just, I, I get blown away on it because I know about this. Why isn't this being promoted or being made known among people today? It blows my mind. The reason why is because most Christians do not realize that Christianity is not a religion. It's, it's a father and his family. And that is what this new life is all about that Romans the doctrine of the book of Romans is trying so desperately to communicate to people this is it is it is a real new life it's a new life um, I think I shared what was it last week we could reign in life it's a life of it's a, a righteous life or a right it is a life without evil <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's a righteous life without sin. There's two things. Uh, it's an everlasting life. There's two things that it it disrupts and interrupts a perfect life. I say a perfect life because today the ideal life. Uh, I won't go on that. It's been interrupted by death, and it's disrupted by sin. By sin and evil and all that kind of stuff, because of what Jesus Christ made available in the new birth, gift of Holy Spirit, salvation, this new life, we could reign in life, have a life of righteousness, and it's an everlasting life. And the doctrine of the book of Romans, from chapter 12 on through the end of chapter 8, give us details about the how to live this new life. It's absolutely fabulous the way this Romans fits in the Bible here. And of course, <laughs> got to have background in the book of Acts. I know that you have, it's a, an overall knowledge of the Bible as a whole. Now, I know you don't necessarily have to go and become a uh, 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 what do you call it in the seminar stuff I don't know I've studied a lot of this on my own I've, I've um, you know took classes and things of that sort but my gosh this book of Romans is absolutely fabulous and uh, it's divided the doctrine of the book of Romans is divided into two parts I, I shared this before and this is kind of a new discovery for me also. Chapter 5, verse 12 previous, it's the good news regarding Jesus Christ to the sinner. And from chapter 5, verse 12 on through the end of chapter 8, it's the good news regarding Jesus Christ to the saint, the one who's born into the family of God. This is what this is specifically about it's the good news regarding Jesus Christ to the saint and a saint is one who's got Holy Spirit <laughs> because God sainted you you don't have to get sainted by I don't know how they do it nowadays how to get person sainted but biblically a saint is someone who has Holy Spirit they're born into the family of God that's fabulous isn't it this is a family business. Well, I told you we were going to Romans chapter 1, didn't I? Because there were things that were prophesied. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, Romans uh, chapter 1. Oh, I don't have you on my screen here. Okay, there's this. Yeah. And verse 2, which he had promised before. Paul, servant of Jesus Christ, called an apostle separated under the gospel of God which he God uh oh what happened I just joined him hi God bless nice, you Chandra. God bless you gal <laughs> God bless you which he had promised before 
by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Well, what was promised before? That this, that this Christ, that this coming one would be raised from the dead. And that's exactly what it says in the next verse concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which is made of the seed of the David, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared, marked out. That's the word declared. He was marked out, the Son of God, with power, according to the Spirit of Holiness. He was marked out. How? It was by the resurrection from the dead. And that, that, <clears throat> that is the foundation to the Christian doctrine. All uh, three main doctrines of, of the Christian curriculum, uh, the seven church epistles, <clears throat> that any subject regarding Christianity is always related back to this one central foundation right here the reality that this Jesus Christ was marked out the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead and when he was raised from the dead something became available well what was it? It was the gift of Holy Spirit. It was and this gift of Holy Spirit is that new life. <clears throat> Part of it anyway. Well, it's all in it together. It's a new life. <laughs> because when you get born into the family of God, God creates uh, born again of... Uh, what is that in Peter? Uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. See, I have to quote it to remember it. Sorry about that. But it's incorruptible seed. This gift of Holy Spirit is incorruptible seed. So and everything regarding anything in Christian doctrine, the foundation is that this Jesus Christ was marked out, the Son of God. And now today, we learn to walk in this newness of life. Remember, Paul said, oh, what is it in verse? It's down there a little bit. You can find it. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit. Well, how do you do How did Paul do that? How do you do that? Well, the doctrine of the book of Romans teaches you how to serve with your spirit. And this spirit you receive when you're born again, it will, it will lay dormant until you live it. In order to live this new life, you've got to live it. And the instructions on how to is the doctrine of the book of Romans. Yeah, for I longed... Where, where was it? Yeah, there it is, verse 9. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. Verse 11 really hit me this past week because um, it, it, this is something that's quite been a number over. of years, but over the past, I don't know, a few weeks, maybe not even more than a month, I have had a longing desire for manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, why is it? Is that something that I just make up this is a longing it's a longing for I long to uh, I missed it where was it for I long to yeah there it is verse 11 <laughs> you moved it up on me for I long to see you that I may um, impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established the word spiritual gift is really interesting because that is actually defined in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. But I long for manifestation, to go to fellowship and hear manifestations, to, to uh, manifest and hear manifestations. And this longing is not something I make up. It, it is real. And it is that Christ in me that that does this longing I begin to recognize this sort of thing over time because um, and you know it's that Christ in you doing uh, giving you that longing 
because uh, it it lines up with the word. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know how I got off on that. I just want you to be aware that there is a real Christ in you and learning to operate it. Because there's nine manifestations. Learning to operate it, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, those kinds of things. You know, we we as uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we learn to operate that to bless each other, to build each other up, to exhort, to comfort. Uh, to praise God, to love God, to give God glory. Those things are are designed for us. That's for our benefit. And it... <clears throat> <laughs> anyway, why I got off on that, I don't know. Because our priority in the family business is to do what we're instructed to do. And part of that is the operation of manifestation, all nine of them, and this uh, longing that I'm talking about is that Christ in me, and it's it's all, it's operation of manifestation. Okay, move it on. I've said it too many times now. Let's go on to, oh, the other thing that was written before was, uh, uh, was a central focus of the doctrine of the Book of Romans, and it's down there, what, at verse 16, 17? Yeah, for as much I am ready to preach the gospel unto you that are in Rome also, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. That's the subject now of the doctrine of the book of Romans, right? <clears throat> for everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, which you begin to realize as you read through this doctrine of the book of Romans that there are things uh, related to Gentiles, there are things related to Jews, and both must be understood because when you get to chapter 5 and in verse 12, it is specifically referring to that third category, and that is the saints. <laughs> anyway, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith this was a prophecy in uh, Habakkuk and that faith I understand this word faith uh, and I use it I know I think RAV use uh, translate it trust uh, it's a Greek word pistis pistio is the verb I understand this word and I also understand it that there was a, ta a time, bef well, it's in Galatians, it says, before faith came. And that's rather confusing. But the only reason it's confusing, because this is something new. This doctrine of the Book of Roman is something new that, had, that was not available before the day of Pentecost. Something that Jesus Christ did made this available. And that's what it's trying to communicate. And that's how I understand this word faith. Because there was faith in the Old Testament. You go back, you go through and read Hebrews. What was it? Hebrews 11 or 12? Hebrews 11. Uh, um, uh, Abel. By faith, Abel. Uh, by faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Moses. All of the, They had faith. So what does that mean before faith came? This is something that Jesus Christ made available specifically to us. That's the significance behind this particular verse here. Because faith was available. But faith regarding Jesus Christ is specific. And that's to us. And this is done absolutely legal. You would blow your mind just how legal this is particular thing that God made available to us through Jesus Christ is and you discover it when you read chapter 5 verse 12 when you get to chapter 5 verse 12 that whole section can be understood in several lights and one of them is that it is a legal statement from God Almighty it's it's absolutely you could read it in other lights like uh, 
uh, in the point of view of grace and in the point of view of comparing uh, Adam with Jesus Christ. And another one, like last week when I taught, I emphasized life, a new life. So this chapter 5, verse 12 through 21, is absolutely fabulous how God uh, presents it to us. And so when you read through this Romans, this chapter 5, verse 12 through 21, can be understood in several different lights or several different angles, several different subjects. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that, but as I'm working through this doctrine of the book of Romans, you begin to see this uh, open up to you. So I guess you can tell I'm kind of excited about it, and I apologize. I'm kind of stumbling around here. We're going to chapter 5, verse 12. Yeah, there you go. And I read this last week, and we went on into uh, chapter 6. This whole section, it's hard to start and not finish through to the end of uh, chapter 8 because this whole section fits together from chapter 5 verse 12 all the way through to the end of chapter 8 and this whole section is specifically uh, the good news regarding Jesus Christ to the saint okay so when we're reading that now why is it before it was to the sinner it's, it was uh, the doctrine of the book of Romans before this all the way up to chapter 5 verse 11 all of that is to the sinner and when you read that uh, it make it begins to make sense and then from right here on when you read this from chapter 5 verse 12 through to the end of chapter 8 it is specifically to and for the saint that's us. <laughs> that is us. Uh oh, I lost my, I lost you, Michael. So uh, let me read it, and then I'm gonna. Uh, oh, before I go there, before I read this, uh, I'd like to read you something else, and it's the last verse of chapter eight before I go into this, and it really blessed me because this, this, that part of it. It's, yeah, Romans chapter 8, and it's a lot like the last verse in there, the last couple of verses. Okay. For I am persuaded, this is Paul, and for I am persuaded, he, he didn't start this way. He, he worked it until it beca he became persuaded. I don't know how else to put that in the words. But for I am persuaded. This wasn't done overnight. This took some work. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Now, I can't explain a lot of these uh, things that he's talking about here. But listen to this. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. This is the concluding statement that Paul had made in this of this doctrine of the book of Romans that there's absolutely nothing that could separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And that is fabulous to think about that. Now this verse begins to become real for me. It took some work working through the doctrine of the book of Romans but now this verse becomes alive to me because now I can see how that God there's nothing that could separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus because of the work that Jesus Christ did and all of the effort that God went into planning out this great plan of redemption all is centrally focused on that saint, you and I. And you and I are part of this. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That is fabulous, isn't so, it? Yeah, that's what happens when you study the Bible. You get kind of excited about it. 
<laughs> Wherefore, as by one man sin into the world, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so then death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. And that was this was Adam, and his disobedience caused two things that has interrupted life and has disrupted life. Now, wouldn't it be nice to live in a, a world today where there's no one stealing from you or lying to you or, or <laughs> hurting other people? That's what happened when Adam disobeyed God. All of this evil now we've got to put up with. We got stuck with it. And it not only has it been disrupted by this sin and this sin nature, it's been interrupted by death. Now people die now. Can you imagine during that period of time, and this is Genesis chapter 5. Uh, Genesis chapter 5 wasn't written during the period of time this occurred, but people just started dying off. There was one death, yeah, uh, Cain murdered Abel. That must have been quite shocking. But many, many years later, just people just started dying off. And to sit and think about that must have really been devastating for those people during that period of time. We've gotten so callous to it today you know, the people dying, you know, someone close to us passes away, it hurts. It's, it's sorrow. There's a great deal of grief and sorrow because of a loved one getting passed away. But someone who has lived back during the time of Adam, they didn't, it wasn't as common as it is today. People die every day today. We be, just become calloused. It must have been shocking to them during that period of time. And mankind nowadays tend, tend to think, well, that's just all part of life. Well, God didn't design it that way. It got screwed up somehow. Well, no, somehow. Well, we know now what it is. <laughs> it's written right there, written right in front of us. Anyway, let me move on. <laughs> For until the law sin. Oh, by the way, this word sin is significant because previously it was sins in the plural. Now it's sin. And that sin is that sin nature that's been in development for 6,000 years. And that needs to be understood when you read through these verses. Nevertheless, death reigned like a king reigns in a kingdom. Death reigned. It ha what is a king? It, he has authority over his kingdom. He has say-so. He makes the law. He tells this person to do this and that. And, you know, he, he's, he reigns over that kingdom. <clears throat> well, death reigned during this time from Adam to Moses. Even, the, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression and those who had not sinned who is the figure who is the figure uh, I think I explained this one that word figure is like an imprint it is uh, I think it's called a die where there's like a typewriter a typewriter has the letters and numbers on the keys when you press it, the little hammer hits the paper and it makes an imprint of that. That's that word type, uh, figure. It's a type. It's a type. And there were many types. If you, you remember, for example, you know, the, uh, what was it, the, the Passover lamb was a type of Christ. Well, Moses was a type of of Christ. Now, there were a, a number of those, and that's what that's referring to here. Anyway, 
I don't want to go into too much detail because that's I got a teaching all in itself. Who is a type of him that was to come? Not as the infant. Stumble on my words. But not as the offense. That's Adam. Adam's transgression. Adam's disobedience. So also is the free gift. Now I think I talked about this last time. There's three specific words. I forgot what we... Uh, I think Donald can expound on that during the uh, during the uh, discussion, because <laughs> I forgot what it was. <laughs> For if through the offense one he, the ah, stumble on my words again. That's why I do teachings like this to help get over some of these word stumblings. For if through the offense of one. Many be dead, many, understatement. Much more the grace of God. Grace, that's God's favor. God's favor. That's why this section is speaking to the saints. Does God favor the world? Well, yes, for God so loved the world. Remember John 3.16, God, God doesn't hate the world. He's trying to rescue the world. <clears throat> However... The saints are a specific category of people. There's the Jew, there's the Gentile, and then God makes a third special category of people called the saint. And he favors that particular group. And I'm in that group. Ha, 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 so are you. <laughs> that's you. That's God's grace. That, that's what this is talking about here. It, God favors that particular group that we belong in. That's what that grace means. And there's a, a considerable amount of stuff we have because of Jesus Christ. Things that we are, things that we have, and it's by grace. We didn't work for it. We didn't buy We can't buy it. It's ours because we belong in that category of people. So that's that word grace. See, I told you, you could, you could read through this section here in several different lights. One of them is grace. Uh, the other one I didn't mention was the word one. It was by one man who screwed everything up, and it's by one man who's fixing it all. Gee, I wonder who that is. Anyway, Jesus Christ. Quit guessing. <laughs> grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded to many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto being made righteous. That's the word justified, be made righteous. And here is a verse that really set me on fire I've, I don't know how many times I've read this but you know you've just got to work it until it becomes real that, that's the only way I can explain it to work it and apply it work it into your mind and it then it, it just becomes real it, beco it becomes real I don't know how to explain it the only thing I can say, just do what the Word says, and it's guaranteed that you will grow. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, there's that death reigning again like a king reigns over a kingdom, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. See, it's a gift because Jesus Christ was an atoning sacrifice. He was an he paid for something. And what he paid for, <clears throat> what it was that he paid for, we've got it. We we are, we have. That's that's what this is about. It's a free uh, it's a gift of righteousness. And here it is, shall reign like a king reigns in a kingdom shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? So this life 
was disrupted and interrupted, now we could reign in life. Like a king that reigns over his kingdom, we can reign in life. We could reign in life. That's part of this new life that this uh, section, uh, this doctrine of the Book of Romans, is, is talking about. Isn't that great? Wherefore, as by one man's offense, uh, uh, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. I'm getting kind of excited. I need to slow down. Can't read when I'm excited. Even so, by the righteousness of one, that's Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men, all men unto being a righteous life. The word justification, righteous. It is a righteous life, a life of righteousness. It's a this is what's been disrupted when when if Adam had not sinned and we would have been born into a perfect life but it's been disrupted by evil and now here it says uh, we have a life of righteousness a righteous life free from evil that's what that's trying to say it's it's being it was fixed. It was screwed up, and now it got fixed. So now we can live a righteous life, free from the bondage and tyranny and imprisonment of this power of sin, this power of evil that screwed everything up. Anyway, move on. <laughs> That's what that verse is trying to say. It's a new life. It's free. We're free from that stuff. Move on. Keep on going. <laughs> For as by one man's disobedience, that's Adam, many, understatement, that's an understatement, many, that's everybody, <laughs> many. It's that word one comparing with many, and it's an understatement. A gross understatement. Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one, that's Jesus Christ, many shall be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. And we need to remember this because this verse here is connected to the next chapter, uh, the first few verses in the next chapter. Remember this, and it's sad that they put a chapter right there because it splits this up a little bit. So remember, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That's God's favor, right? That as sin, the power of sin, that sin nature, that what Adam did hath reigned unto death, even so might grace, God's favor, reign through righteousness unto everlasting life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Quickly over to chapter 6. <coughs> oh, you must have hit the wrong button there. <laughs> Chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Do you remember that previous verse? That's why they should not have put a chapter here. So this is an interesting question, and by the way, this is a figure of speech. Uh, I hope I get this right. I think it's called erotasis or interrogation. And these questions are important when you're reading through the uh, doctrine of the book of Romans because when you get to chapter 8, there are questions that lead up to that concluding statement that we read earlier. Anyway, it's called erotasis, and it's to capture our attention. Shall we continue in sin? Now, it didn't say, shall we continue? continue to sin it said sh shall we continue in sin because this word sin is referring to that old nature that has been in development for 6,000 years it is the old sin nature 
and, and Adam was the one that caused all that mess. And it's that is what has interrupted and disrupted life. You know, it's interrupted by death, <coughs> and it's disrupted by evil. Always somebody that wants to steal something or hurt somebody. Anyway, that's that word sin. Shall we continue in that sin nature that grace might may abound? And that even saying that is uh, it doesn't fit. Just saying that doesn't fit. That's why he said in the next verse, well, gosh, God forbid. Of course not. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See, we're already dead. Now, that doesn't mean we stop breathing. Eventually, we're going to die. But we all have this uh, uh, had, you, you know, you and I as saints had at one time the death penalty hanging over our heads <coughs> and that's because of what Adam did and that's related to the law because uh, the law uh, helped us to wreck well, it's like the stop sign you know you get to a busy intersection and if there's no stop sign there, it'd be stupid just to run that intersection. If you know that that intersection is busy, you know, you can run over somebody or somebody can run over you. It's dangerous. And that's why they, you know, pass a law and put a stop sign there. The law was to help us to recognize exactly what sin is. The law was God's, oh, how did, John put it in a beautiful way. It was, it is God's standard for righteousness. It's God's standard for righteousness, specifically to the Jew, but it, it was to preserve them alive. I think I shared this before. Yeah, that was in Deuteronomy. It was to preserve them alive. <coughs> and if they stayed faithful, they had a guaranteed spot in the resurrection. Cool. How did I get off on that? Oh, yeah. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? It's it's like living death. You, you know, you've been... The children of Israel was rescued, this is a beautiful parallel, was rescued out of the bondage of Egypt. They made slaves out of the children of Egypt, uh, ch children of Israel in Egypt. They made slaves out of them. And they had taskmasters. In fact, they were, they were conspiring to get rid of them by uh, killing the, their firstborn and such. You go back and read it. That's in Exodus. But God, uh, um, through Moses, sent Moses and rescued them out of the bondage of, e of Egypt. And yet there were still some of them that thought, well, <laughs> we were better off in Egypt. A number of times this had occurred. Anyway, you read about it. Beautiful parallel. But today, in our day and time, we are rescued out of the bondage and the imprisonment of sin, the sin nature. We've been rescued out of it. We've, that's part of salvation. We've been res Why would we want to go back to Egypt? <laughs> that's what it's trying to say there. Why would we want to go back and live in Egypt? <laughs> We have a new life. It's We can reign in life. It's a life of righteousness, and it's an everlasting life. And that is what God made available to us today and what this doctrine of the book of Romans is trying to teach. <laughs> One of the, uh, put on a broken record. This is what the doctrine of Romans is trying to teach. So I'll just, if I just said that throughout the whole teaching... <laughs> 
may have to wake everybody up, I guess. Okay, move on. <laughs> have I made it to a half an hour yet? You know, I better take a break here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take a break here. And, uh, because I wasn't planning on going. Yeah, we're at 45, we're at 45 really? minutes already. Sorry about yeah. that, guys. Okay, Don, back okay. to you. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Alan. And we'll all be back with part two very shortly. Part two B very shortly.